look at Charlottesville, especially that Friday night with the tiki torches. One people, one nation, and immigration! I think the country was shocked because those folks looked like people in your neighborhood. They didn't have the robes. They didn't have the, the tattoos all over their body. They looked like somebody that you might know. The shocking images, the killing in the street. The car just plowed through hundreds of people. Burn that Burn that the violence in Virginia last weekend was just the most recent and most tragic confrontation between a new breed of white supremacists and a militant resistance. We're seeing a period of unusual, intense polarization among the population and in the political arena. I called you an idiot. This guy called you an I called you an idiot. Now get over there where you belong. For the past six months, we've been crisscrossing the country, tracking all of this political violence, embedded with both sides, from their biggest brawls to their secret meetings. Tonight, a lot of what you hear is going to be hard and difficult, but you need to understand where it all began. Our story starts here. Knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. Okay? Just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees. I promise. I promise. Last year, the Trump campaign inspired many types of people. Fire the first shot of the race for baby! Among them, Matt Heimbach a rising star of a white nationalist movement that calls itself the alt-right. We're here to say that we're here to defend our heritage. President Trump has denounced groups like Heimbach's. Racism is evil. The Confederate flag. But Heimbach says the president has been an inspiration. He's opened up a door. His movement has opened up a door. But it's up to us to take the initiative. The Southern Poverty Law Center says the number of hate groups rose last year to near its all-time high. Now, leaders like Heimbach admit to a newfound energy. I think he's a reflection of the excitement that Mr. Trump has uh, engendered in the white supremacist movement. Get out of here! Get out! Out! That's out, Heimbach out. at a Trump rally last March. The guy with the beard and the red hat striking and then shoving this African-American protester as she's being led away. He later pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct. There wouldn't be any violence at Trump rallies if, of course, the far-left protesters hadn't gone into the rallies and tried to disrupt them. Isn't there something to be said about decency? Clearly, you're on that video pushing a woman from the back. You have a right to defend yourself. The antagonists of the alt-right are really a loose-knit group of activists who prefer to be called the Antifa movement, short for anti-fascist. Right now, we're in a very dangerous place. We're in a very troubling place. Lacey McCauley, a self-described anarchist and mild-mannered worker at a nonprofit by day, was one of the few Antifa activists willing to go on camera for this report. A lot of people basically have been responding by uh, caring to join the anti-fascist movement. Antifa is on the hard left. In fact, many would argue parts of them aren't even left. They're anarchists. <laughs> And they're not afraid to play rough. At this Trump campaign rally in San Jose last June, I saw it up close. What happened? I was walking on the street and this guy like sucker punched me in the back of the head. Antifa protesters brutalized Trump supporters at random, throwing eggs at them, oh my God. beating them bloody, and attacking their cars. And there's no doubt that the Antifa believe that physical confrontation is necessary to prevent the rise of white supremacy. The protest didn't cool down when Trump won the election. The man who will be the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. While the alt-right rejoiced. The alt-right is a overwhelmingly young movement. It was at this notorious conference in November that much of the country was introduced to Richard Spencer, the self-styled intellectual who coined the term alt-right. Because Donald Trump means that the world's changing. It means that something new is coming into the political reality. Several eagerly joined in his enthusiastic Nazi salute. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Let's not sugarcoat this. He's a Nazi. A lot of Americans who saw that mm -hmm. 
it was terrifying. Um, I knew that I was being highly provocative when I said hail Trump. Oh, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. To be clear, most Trump supporters aren't alt-right demonstrators. Most Trump resistors are not Antifa. But those mobilized minorities at the extremes can have a big impact. And January 20th, Inauguration Day became D-Day for both sides. And many of the people 2020 has been following for months were right in the middle of it. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. Just blocks away, some members of Lacey McCauley's Antifa group, Disrupt J20, swung into action, torching a limousine and scuffling with police. There's a massive undertaking in the, uh, the district to actually oppose the inauguration of Donald J. Trump. McCauley believes hate speech is the equivalent of violence and can be answered with violence. We've seen her take on armed white supremacists with little more than a bullhorn. So why do these confrontations always get so violent? I mean, yes, you might have your hot-headed 19-year-olds. Antifa, who I know, are really trying to actually act in self-defense. But what about the vandalism and harassment here of an inaugural ball guest? perpetrated by some of her associates using so-called black block tactics. Where everyone wears the same color. Hey, basic black, it's trendy. And also just, uh, you know, wearing the mask again to conceal your identity. The world got a glimpse of these tactics in action when some of Macaulay's group, clad all in black, smashed the windows of a Starbucks in a Bank of America. Breaking a window is a symbolic act. Windows break all the time. Things break all the time. So this is your home. If I, if I, after this interview, if I broke all your windows in a symbolic act, you'd be okay with that? That would be a symbolic act. I mean, if you want to protest this interview, you can break the windows. And there that day at a command post in McPherson Square, Daryl Lamont Jenkins, a truck driver from Philadelphia who describes himself as the intelligence expert for Antifa, keeping tabs on Spencer, Heimbach, and their alt-right ilk. So you're a watchdog. Crescence. Mm -hmm. We basically just report what we see. We go anywhere they go. On the other side, Matt Heimbach was there, and Richard Spencer turned up as well. I've given conferences for, for ages, and uh, we'll usually expect some protesters, they'll do silly string or something like that. Then, a turning point. Watch this. Spencer was conducting an interview when, wait for it, a man walks up and punches him right in the face in the middle of the street. If you're doing something important, you're going to be attacked, uh, verbally and even physically, so I'm, I'm willing to go through with it. The attack went viral instantly and sparked a spirited internet debate about whether or not it was okay to punch a Nazi. Is that okay? I think that you saw a lot of people actually very um, inspired by the fact that the Nazis are not invincible. Of course it's not okay to punch a Nazi, any more than it's okay to punch a doctor who performs abortion, if you believe abortion's murder. The same people who insist that they are in the right when they are engaging in violence uh, would be horrified if, if the roles were reversed. As fate would have it, just hours after Spencer was punched, the roles were reversed. On inauguration night in Seattle, an anti-Trump activist was injured by a gunshot through the abdomen. The only individual who's ever been shot at one of these rallies, he was an Antifa member, and he was shot by a MAGA hat-wearing Trump fan. Here's some reality, 74% of the extremist related killings in this country in the past 10 years have been carried out by right-wing extremists. Given all that, you'd think Spencer and the alt-right might have wanted to dial things back. But instead, he was just getting started. They brought the fight to us. There was a war started, and, and those sons of bitches started the war. And so we're going to respond to them. When we come back, the alt-right is heading to campus, trying to recruit America's youth and the resistance is there to greet them. This is our home! Communist scum off our streets! Communist scum off our streets! And inside an alt-right conclave, you never know who you'll meet. I'm a Baptist preacher, so I gotta maintain a low profile.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.